Okay, let's set up the microphone. <clears throat> Testing. Okay. So yesterday was Pentecost Sunday, the day that in the Bible, in Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit descends upon the apostles in a great moment of, of tongues of, of fire, uh, strong driving wind, speaking in crazy languages. It's awesome. It's incredible. It's a great day, the end of the Easter season, liturgical year. And I decided this year to pray the Holy Spirit Novena, which is the original novena that biblically Jesus uh, invites his, his apostles people closest to him, that before he's going to ascend into heaven, to stay in Jerusalem for a while from the ascension until Pentecost, essentially, to pray, to stay and pray for the coming of the Holy Spirit, that the promise of the Father, as Jesus says. And so that's what they did. So for those next nine days, they pray in the upper room, the apostles, Mary, a few others, and on Pentecost Sunday, there's this incredible outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And that's what this novena, this nine days of prayer, praying for the coming of the Holy Spirit, is in the image of, of what they did biblically, the original apostles. So I decided this year, I was going to do it. I was going to pray uh, the Holy Spirit novena, nine days leading up to Pentecost Sunday, praying for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit in my life. And I was pumped. I was like, I'm ready. I'm ready for just incredible gifts of the Holy Spirit to be poured out on my life. Come Pentecost Sunday, I'm going to be doing backflips. I'm ready for it. You know what I got? Pentecost Sunday? None of that. <laughs> really, all things considered, compared to the biblical account of Pentecost, my Pentecost Sunday was a measly comparison. Uh, not so much very tangible spiritual gifts. From the Holy Spirit experience on that day. So I guess the question I want to answer in this video is, why does God not answer our prayers sometimes? I made a video a few weeks, maybe a month or two back about how Jesus says in the scriptures, ask and you will receive, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be open to you. And I believe it because Jesus said it, that when we pray, when we pray with true faith, and when we pray and we abide in the heart of Jesus, and where our will is united with His, ask and we'll receive, seek and we'll find, knock and the door will be opened. So then, you and I have this common experience, I am sure, of praying for things that don't come to be. And why is that the case? I think a few things. First one being kind of just alluded to is that Jesus says that if you abide in me, in the Gospel of John, he says, if you abide in me, ask and you will receive. And pray for, pray for things with, with true faith. If we abide in Jesus Christ, if our will is united to his, then pray for it and we'll receive it in the heart of Jesus. But if our will is not united to his and we ask for something crazy, that the Lord doesn't have for us in His good will, and if it's something that's maybe not what's best for us, then if God is a good God, then He's not gonna give us that thing. So number one, you might just be asking for something that isn't really what's best for you. Number two, I think, is that the way that we pray plays a factor into this ask and you'll receive, seek and you will find. I think the Lord invites us to pray receptively, uh, expectantly, and persistently. Receptive, expectant, persistent. Those three things. And I'll say a little bit about those. That I ought to be receptive. I ought to actually be open to receiving what the Lord has in store for me. That if, I, if I'm truly praying for like, Lord, bless me with this or this. Uh, bless me with a boyfriend or girlfriend if I'm single. Bless me with a new job or something like this. Bless me with, with like a real challenge, with real purpose in my life. Or, or just pour out your love upon me, Lord, today because I need it. If I'm not actually open to receiving that, if I'm not actually open to like receiving the challenge or the call that the Lord has in store for me, if I'm not actually open to receiving the love that the Lord wants to give me, then how can I receive it? Because I'm one, not receptive. Two, expectant. That if I'm not actually praying and expecting the Lord to pour out that grace upon me, then how's he going to? If I, if I pray like, uh, Lord, 
uh, give me give me boyfriend girlfriend give me a new job give me pour out your love upon me whatever the case may be but I think ah he's not really gonna do it then what kind of faith is that that's no faith at all that we need to pray like ask and you'll receive seek and you'll find pray with expectant faith first receptive that if the Lord wants to give this to me then I'm open to it but also like I believe that, Lord Jesus, you do what you say that you do, that you are who you say that you are, and you've said, ask and you'll receive. So I'm praying expectantly, with expectant faith that you'll do this for me. And the third thing, receptive, expectant, and persistent, is that maybe now's not the time. Maybe I'm not fully ready. Or maybe the Lord is inviting me to be patient with this for a little bit longer. Because he knows the right timing much better than I know the right timing. But he invites us, he says in the scriptures, to persist in prayer. Luke 5-8, through 8, Jesus talks about the man going to another man's house in the middle of the night, asking him for bread because someone showed up at his house. Jesus says, I tell you, if he does not get up to give him the loaves because of their friendship, he will get up to give him whatever he needs because of his persistence. I'm talking about prayer. That the Lord invites us to persist in prayer because... He then says, I tell you, ask and you'll receive, seek and you'll find, knock and the door will be open to you. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to keep praying for the Holy Spirit to pour out his love and his peace and his joy in my life um, because I certainly need it. And I'm going to look at my own life and look at, am I really receptive to this? Am I really open to receive the love that the Lord wants to pour out on me? the peace that he wants to give me in my life, the freedom that he has in store for me. Am I really receptive to that? Or are there certain walls that I need to be broken down to receive that? Am I really expectant that if I ask the Lord to pour out his, his peace, his joy, his love on me in my life, that he'll actually do it? Or am I just praying with some kind of like false hope that this is simply what Christians do and ask for these things. Do I really believe the Holy Spirit's real and alive and moving and wants to work in my heart? And am I persisting in that? That even if I don't get it now, if I don't get it on Pentecost Sunday, maybe I'll get it next Sunday or the next Sunday. Or whenever the Lord designs for me to receive the peace and joy and love and freedom that He has in store for me, that's all I can trust. And what I have for you today is the encouragement for you to pray in the same way. To look at your desires and if they're good. And if they're united with God's will. And if they are, if those things that you're praying for are united with God's good will, then pray receptively, open to what He has to give you. Expectantly, hoping, real hope and faith that He'll give it to you. And persisting. That we continue to come to our Lord day after day, draw closer to His heart, so that he can give us all the abundance that he has in store for you and me.